Yeah, see, so think a little bit just what I'm going to say exactly. Ah, ah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, now I'm rolling, huh? You're rolling, yeah. I'm live, Off okay. Uh, my name is Ryan Hunt, part of the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project at quantumheat.org, and I'm the R&D manager here at Hunt Utilities Group in Pine River, Minnesota. We are busy making a replication of the Chalani experiment, and we're going to give you a quick tour of the people doing it and the apparatus itself. I'm Paul Hunt, and I'm the owner of this place. And I work mostly on the electronics, uh, on, the, on the data acquisition systems and power supplies, and a little bit on the theory. Um, I do anything that they tell me to do around here. Actually, my title is research assistant, but what I actually am is kind of a shop facilitator. I do procurement, parts research, uh, maintenance, cleaning, organization, and anything else that, uh, that needs to be done. We all wear a lot of hats around here. We got video footage of Wayne, our mechanical wizard. Uh, he is so good he's only here half the time, which is why we can't video him live right now. And uh, this is footage of him working on the base plate on the machine. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Jeff Leesmacki, and uh, I um, basically um, laid out the circuit board for the Hugnet Lab board. Um, and I started by capturing the schematic that was given to me by uh, Paul and um, I added the components in the schematic capture program and um, did a wiring connection and then generated um, an interconnect map and from that we move to um, the circuit board layout. I'll just uh, put that right out. Uh, I can do this. At least, you know, I believe I can. Uh. I'm Gavin, and I work here working on this electron microscope. It's a bit messy right now. Uh, I have it mostly assembled, but partially disassembled. You'd be surprised how much an electron microscope is like working on a car. Um, I also am working on developing a website for Hugnet Lab Boards and uh, logo design for the same. Uh, well, it looks like we'll be using the electron microscope to look at Chelani wire and also nickel powder samples. What we really want to look for is surface topography, uh, which is uh, on the surface is supposedly where the Lenner reaction takes place. Uh, we'll be looking for small crevices and, and, and features on the surface where hydrogen could get nestled in. All right. Hi, my name is Malachi Heder. I'm a graduate of the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. I have a bachelor's in chemical engineering, and uh, I'm an intern here in the R&D department at Hunt Utilities Group. Uh, what we have here is the insert into the Chelani reactor. Um, it has uh, flanges on both the bottom here. This is basically the base. And the, and the top, there'll be one sitting on there. How this works is there's uh, a mica insert, th uh, three fins, where we wrap, wrap the wire all the way around it, all the way up and back. And they come out through little pass-throughs down in the bottom of the flange. That's held in with some epoxy. Um, so we have the pass-throughs that we can uh, apply voltage and current to and heat up the wire, and that heats up the reactor inside. Um, next, we put on a, another flange, and inside this flange, there's a uh, rubber gasket in there. And that's a high-temperature gasket. Actually, first, what goes on is the, the copper between the flanges, and that is another gasket, actually. Um, so we put the copper gasket on, and then the upper flange, and those will be bolted together. That'll create a nice seal there. And uh, the purpose of the rubber gasket is to um, kind of seat the glass tube, the quartz tube here, on there, and give it enough wiggle room so that um, when the reactor is heated up, the uh, glass does not break from the expansion of the metal. So we have. Um, two flanges, the rubber gasket, and we have the quartz tube that goes around it. And then on top, there's a, a similar flange where we'll put another rubber gasket through. And that'll sit on top and hold everything down. 
Now, I don't have them here, but what uh, we'll see on the actual reactor, these are held together by long uh, threaded rods, stainless steel rods, and those will sit in here and hold the whole um, reactor kind of compressed together as we heat it up. Basically, we, right now we have two different pieces. We have uh, the actual reactor, which has, well, the reactor's in it, and then we have a, a uh, safety shield around the outside, which is made of Lexan, and we get, uh, the, the base is made out of um, aluminum, and that holds it in there real nicely. We're, I mean, we're working with positive pressures and, and hydrogen, of all things, so we want to, you know, have as much safety as we, as we possibly can. Um, but like you saw in the, when I was in the clean room there, um, the reactor is put together with the, we have the stainless steel rods that are um, holding together, keeping pressure on both ends, keeping the glass in there and sealed. Um, you can see there's a lot more thermocouples and wires going into it. Uh, those are all, these wires down here are power wires, these yellow ones are thermocouple wires, and we have a pressure sensor here. Um, so we can monitor the, the pressure as well as the temperature in different areas inside of the reactor. Um, the power wires go to our um, power supply and endpoint package, which is basically all of our data acquisition right there. Um, uh, everything traces back into here, and these three um, green boards are the endpoints, which uh, physically connect our data to the software system. Um, so we've spent the last few weeks developing this neat little package which actually has a has a cover here. Also see-through, Lexan. Uh, transparency is the name of the game here. And so that just kind of sits in there. It'll, it'll screw in and it's a nice little um, little package. You can actually I'll turn it here and you can see the see the logo, all the knobs and switches, and that's all for, um, we have two different channels. Um, one will be for this, the regular heating wire, and one will be for the, actually the, um, the Chalani wire that he'll be treating and sending to us. And then a manual adjustment knob at the bottom. All of the, um, all of the data that we collect at, on the endpoints, that'll come over here to, to our software um, where we can see, we can monitor all the, uh, all the power settings for both channels, all the temperatures and all the pressures. Um, and it kind of displays in a nice little graph here where you can, you can select which ones you want to see and how far back you want to see them. Uh, yeah, so a bit more about where we are in the experiment. Um, so we've got it built, we've got all the power stuff working. Um, uh, we're taking all the measurements correctly. Um, Right now we're calibrating with helium, like I like I mentioned. So I'm running it through um, five watt steps on each channel, all the way up to I guess our max um, our max wattage out of this power supply unit, and that'll be finished shortly today. And uh, like I said, once that's done, we'll be able to pressurize it with hydrogen, which is we have a little sniffer here that sniffs any um, combustible gases. So we'll be able to uh, figure out if there are and where the leaks are. Um, and from there, uh, once we get the, the wire, we'll be able to um, we'll be able to see if it works. So that should be very fun and interesting.